and welcome again to yet another OpenShift Commons gathering. And today we're doing um, this session at an ACPAC friendly time for once. And I'm really pleased to have Hyde Sugiyama from um, our Red Hat Technology Office, who is going to talk today about multi-access edge computing and OpenShift. And um, we're going to go for about 40 minutes of talking. Um, if you have questions, please ask them in the chat. And then there'll be some live Q&A at the end. Um, but this is a new topic to, for most of us, so I'm really pleased that you're going to get Hyde's introduction to it. And um, then hopefully you'll join us again at the OpenShift Commons gathering where um, some of the folks from NTT are going to be joining us as well with Hyde um, to talk about this in more depth. So Hyde, please welcome and please take, take your time. Thank you, Harry Mir, uh, Diane. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Haido Sugiyama. I'm a senior principal technologist at Red Hat. I'm now working, uh, I'm now driving the several projects for the OpenSAC NAV Edge Computing and uh, Edge Pass with OpenShift Container Platform or Cloud Suite. We have a plan for the joint session with NTT Network Technology Laboratory at the OpenShift Commons Gathering in Austin to talk about Teleco Edge Pass strategy for cloud native service in their edge computing infrastructure. Prior for that event, I will share today with you about the design for Teleco Edge Pass in NAB edge computing infrastructure. So in this session, I'll cover the concept of the edge computing and the idea of how to adapt OpenShift Edge Pass in Teleco Edge infrastructure. And lastly, I will share with you POC use case, including NTT Edge Pass POC, that has the capability to provide platform service for industrial IoT, such as IoT robotics and connected car, VTX, on which running in the edge computing infrastructure. With that, let me start. There are several activities relating to the edge computing development. In early 2014, NTT R&D announced the edge computing technology concept in which can reduce cloud application response time in 10 milliseconds by collocating the edge server at the Telec edge node. Cisco is also spending many times to develop the whole computing since 2013 for Internet of Everything, as you know. This also covers the uh, edge computing. They established Open Phone Consortium in 2015. Also, Edge European Telecommunication Standard Institute launched MEC, MEC Industry Specific Group. Initially, they called the uh, uh, mobile edge computing and they changed the name to the March access edge computing. The spec is relating to the mobile edge infrastructure. MEC aims to the place the compute and storage resource like uh, NAV in the 4G radio access network to improve the delivery of the content and application to end users. And this summer, Automotive Edge Computing Consortium has been established. This is a new sign we have to aware of. Telecom industry and other industry have to work together for edge computing technology innovation. This consortium will focus on increasing the network capacity to accommodate automotive big data in the reasonable fashion between the vehicle and the edge computing infrastructure and more efficient network design. In most of the case today, IoT edge device, automotive edge device, mobile user equipment, and many other devices and users have to send the data to cloud or big data center and get response from them. IT workloads are running in the cloud data center, which is far from the user side in most of the case. When we are facing to 
scalable issue to handle the hundreds of SASAM devices. And when it comes to execute action in real time, Teleco Edge Computing Architecture can solve the challenge of latency, scalability, and security. We put Edge Computing System in Teleco Central Office between customer device site and the data center site. Edge computing system can reduce latency and the bandwidth and provide data cache, real-time complex event processing and data pre-processing in the event that are coming out of the device. Edge computing system can drive the communication between the device and the backend system. There are many use cases such as industrial IoT, B2X, video analytics, and the CDN, AR, VR. It's also possible to integrate some of enterprise cloud service at Telec Edge node. Edge computing system is structured like other data centers technology, and they have some of the same requirement. They need runtime environment, containerization, compute power and virtualizing storage, and lightweight messaging technology. They need business rule processing and data analytics to process the huge volume of the data in which are being generated by the device themselves. In addition to the network service entity in OpenSAC and IV, telecom carriers will be able to provide a common service entity and to allow the user to run the real-time application service in OpenShift container platform at the Teleco Central Office nearest to the customer site. So primary target location to run the edge computing is Teleco Central Office. Teleco Central Office typically use multiple access technology to serve diverse customers in residential, enterprise, and the mobile market segment. For residential edge service case, customer optical access lines are aggregated at OLT, optical line terminal, and carried IP traffic to the BNG, global network gateway, to manage each customer's IP session. Edge computing server can be placed behind the BNG. For mobile edge service case, edge computing server running the mobile edge platform can be placed behind the BBU baseband unit. As you might know that there is a project called a CORD or virtual CO to virtualize the network function and to disaggregate network access technology in central office, both CORD and the virtual CO can help to save the collocation space in central office and can add additional value added service such as edge computing service into the central office. The collocation space for the Edge computing service in Teleco Central Office is not unlimited like a big data center. It's depending on the location. These are the summer pictures of the Teleco node that's posting at the website denwakyok.jp. Primary target to develop the edge computing service is a typical central office. It is a small data, uh, data center size in most of the case. You can find more than 2,000 central office in the website. Many central of office have been operated by the fixed network operators who have provided uh, fixed telephone service from long ago. Some of them still have many central office nearest to the customer site. As for mobile network operators, their primary target of edge computing service will be in the urban area, especially for the 5G mobile broadband service. This picture of the tower is a Dokon based station in Shinjuku, Tokyo. It's a nice building. There are many radio network controllers and uh, baseband units in that building. Edge computing server can be installed indoor. 
But uh, in rural area, there are many outdoor implementation in current 4G LTE infrastructure. Outdoor implementation is out of scope at this stage because no space to install edge computing code server. At least indoor implementation is needed for code server implementation. Okay. This slide uh, summarizes an uh, example for the deployment option of the edge computing system in Teleco Central Office. Small port system, mini port system, and the micro port system. Small port system needs 5 to 10 lakh space to install. Mini port system needs 1 or 2 lakh space to install. And uh, micro port system needs a half lakh space to install. In case of a micropod system, hyper-converged node that integrating the computer node and the storage node will be needed. In addition to the collocation space, distance from customer site is also a key point that edge computing can deploy. This slide illustrates a uh, hierarchical location of the central office based on the distance from the customer site. Historically, fixed network operators central office have been located based on the constraint on the physical kappa loop length, which generally means that the number of location is determined primarily by the topology constraint by the maximum distance, typically two or four kilometer depending on the operator. And the size of central office is determined primarily by the type of the area service and the associated population density, urban, suburban, or rural. Basically, it's tiered structure from access to the core. This will the CEO aggregates the customer access line and uh, consolidate the CO, aggregate the distributed CO. Distance from customer site is about less than uh, 20 kilometers. Because latency in fiber optics cable is about one microsecond per kilometer, so it will be less than 0.2 millisecond round trip latency in 20 kilometer optical fiber network. For mobile network, it is depending on the deployment architecture of RAM, radio access network. Distributed RAMs are aggregated by the EPC mobile packet core in main CO that is far from RRH remote radio head. Centralized RAM for 4G LTE advanced pro or 5G in future is aggregated by the BBU hosting site. Distance from the RH and the BBU baseband unit via CPRI front four is about 20 kilometer in case of the 4G LTE. And the BBU hosting sites are aggregated by the main CO. So comparing to the fixed network operator, mobile network operators don't have many central office now because of the cost efficiency for wireless access. Instead, Mobile network operators have many base station outdoor. This slide shows a candidate for the uh, edge computing mm -hmm. server collocation site. Okay, uh, mobile network operators can install the edge computing server at the BB hosting site, and uh, MVNO site is also available to run edge computing service, but a BB hosting site is nearest to the customer and the device via 4G wireless. Peace network operators also can install the edge computing server at the edge aggregation CO site. So each candidate central office needs space for edge computing service. As I mentioned before, there is a virtual CEO project use case in the open daylight. Virtual CEO architecture can virtualize edge function on top of OpenSAC NAB and manage edge traffic with open daylight SDN controller. 
We demonstrated a virtual CEO residential service at OPNAP Summit this year. In the demo, we integrate the virtual BNG, virtual router, and virtual firewall on top of the Red Hat OpenSAC NAV platform and manage edge traffic by the Open Daylight SDN controller. We can use this virtual CEO software stack to integrate edge computing function. Here is the idea to integrate edge computing function in virtual CEO software stack, which is based on the edge NAV reference architecture. We can run OpenShift container platform on top of OpenSAC NAV and containerize edge computing service in each port in OpenShift North. In residential access service, user's IP session is managed by VBNG and transfer specific user traffic to OpenShift node. Ingress control of OpenShift needs enhancement to meet each Telco Edge environment. Telco Edge environment is not the same as an internet data center environment, which plays in the load balancer in front of OpenShift. But DevOps environment can keep the same process to develop the real-time containerized application in port and provide real-time service to a specific user or device through OpenShift container platform at the Telco Edge node. There are many open source that you can use uh, develop, to develop the container application and run in the Edge Pass environment on top of OpenSAC NAV Edge platform for residential access. For example, the Eclipse IoT project has a kind of edge computing project such as Kura, Kapura, Phono. Eclipse Kapura Pro provides a service required to manage IoT gateway and the smart edge device through a core integration framework. Eclipse Phono provides a remote service interface for connecting a large number of IoT devices to backend and uh, interacting with, uh, with them in uniform way, regardless of the device communication protocol. Fixed network operators have many opportunities to provide edge computing service running in the OpenShift container platform on top of the OpenStack NAV now. As for the edge computing architecture in mobile infrastructure, its Mac ISG is working on. The spec is still not finalized, but there are many uh, POC you can uh, you, you might know in the uh, online. Uh, this slide shows uh, its Mac differ, uh, di uh, draft reference architecture for development of the Mac in NAB environment. The major component in the Mac architecture are mobile edge platform, mobile edge orchestrator, mobile edge platform manager, and uh, mobile edge application and virtual infrastructure manager, which is open source controller. Mobile edge system consists of a set of a Mac server and the associated management entity. The Mac server is uh, logical entity that contains a mobile edge platform and the NAV infrastructure on which the mobile edge application run. The mobile edge platform contains a set of baseline functionality that enabled mobile edge application to run on the particular server, as well as to discover and provide mobile edge service through the service registry. The mobile edge platform is also responsible for enforcing the traffic rule to transfer the data packet to the mobile edge application, as well as to maintain the necessary DNS to discover the mobile edge application. Mobile edge application run on the Mac server as a virtual machine and are designed to provide the mobile edge service. Mobile edge computing is designed to provide a multi-tenant hosting environment for 
edge application. The hosting environment consists of a hardware resource and a virtualization infrastructure, which is a OpenStack NAV and associated management service for make application. There's no spec for edge pass in make architecture yet, but uh, we can run OpenShift container platform on OpenStack NAV for containerize some of make application. Mobile Edge platform sets a policy and configuration rule for forwarding user plane traffic to make application by traffic offload function. It also can provide radio network information service and other real-time context information to authorize make application. OpenShift ingress control needs to enhance for interworking with the mobile edge platform. In terms of the logical network architecture, it specified that MEC can be a part of E node B in RAN radio access network or can be run on the external edge computing server like this slide. Mobile edge platform on the OpenSAC NAB in which MEC server can deploy in between RAM and the EPC mobile core on the S1 interface. The user plane over the S1 interface is GTPU based. Usually without MEC server, user's IP application traffic is carried through the GTPU tunnel. And the user traffic can be reached to the GI RAM or MVNO site. So OpenShift container platform can receive the user application traffic at the GI RAM or MVNO. This is the current feasible solution, but the GI RAM and MVNO is 4G mobile in more, uh, <clears throat> GI RAM and uh, MVNO in the 4G mobile, uh, not the real si time service because uh, they are far from the radio access network in most of the case. So what we are trying is in this diagram for edge computing service in 4G radio access network, make server should be deployed in line and mobile edge platform should be transparent to the GTP and run the traffic offload function without impacting the mobile core network once the mobile edge service has been applied. This termination traffic pattern is the edge pass model that OpenShift container platform can be run in the MEC server. As long as OpenShift can receive the specific user's application traffic controlled by the mobile edge platform in MEC server, OpenShift can handle the user's application within each isolated user network and can provide real-time response at the make server to a specific user or device. Usually, telecom carrier cannot modify the user's traffic in transit to telecom domain due to telecom regulation issue. So edge termination traffic pattern is right model for telecom edge pass because user traffic already terminates the user's enterprise domain in this case. So we can run the virtual edge platform in front of OpenShift node on top of OpenSAC NAV platform in each telecom access environment. This slide illustrates that uh, based on the edge reference architecture and uh, we can put VNF in front of OpenShift container platform. The challenge is OpenShift ingress controller enhancement. We have several options for ingress controller, such as uh, HA proxy, NGX, F5, and so on. But uh, all of them don't cover the interworking between edge platform and OpenShift service yet, because current ingress solution is mainly for the public cloud. Telco edge infrastructure are basically private access point. 
for edge computing service in 4G mobile access network, we need interwork with mobile edge platform to handle mobile session and uh, specific data from device for specific edge computing service. For edge computing service in the residential access network, we need to interwork with VBNG to handle the specific IP session from device for specific edge computing service. Another challenge to develop the uh, Teleco Edge Pass in is multi site deployment. As I mentioned before, Teleco Central Office is hierarchical located in the each area. You can imagine from a telephone number assignment, local number, area number, and country number. It's hierarchical. Telecom carrier needs to deploy the distributed open stack NAV in each area, like a two-tier multi-site model in this diagram. On top of the distributed open stack NAV infrastructure, they can build flat open sheet platform like a single data center across multiple central office in each regional area. Open stack NAV distributed compute deployment will be ready in near future since self storage for my site deployment is ready, but uh, some of the telecom carrier don't need to wait for the distribute open stack NAV feature. If they can design optical fiber transport network between two CEO sites within minimum latency. This is dependent on the optical fiber network resource. Basically, if you can ask a op optical fiber transport engineer to keep five millisecond latency between two CEO sites, they will design fiber route if they have a optical fiber network resource. Some of telecom carriers have many optical fiber transport network resource in country, so they can design edge computing infrastructure like a single data center. The key point is uh, to build infrastructure like a single data center. Optical fiber transport engineering is important to build edge cloud computing infrastructure. On top of the optical fiber network infrastructure, telecom carrier can build my site safe storage and open stack NAV. Inter data center SDN solution is also needed. Our SDN partner like Cisco, Juniper, and Nuage have inter data center SDN solution. On top of open stack NAV, OpenSys personal storage can use uh, OpenSack Cinder or uh, self RVD storage. As for the isolating network between each port in each node per each software project, we have many SN partner solutions with CNI plugin. Telecom carrier can work with the SN partner to deploy DevOps awareness network across multiple ports. And that OpenShift SDN needs to interwork with inter DC SDN solution. Here is a POC, what we are working with NTT Network Technology Laboratory. They implemented Red Hat OpenSAC NAB Mars site and ran OpenShift. Actually, it's Cloud Suite product that is including OpenSAC and OpenSift. And they developed IoT Robotics Controller prototype with OpenSift and ran IoT Robotics Container Application in port to control robot remotely. Also, they are adding the common service entities such as IoT Gateway, DNS, and authentication service into OpenSift Container Platform. They are now working on the English design. IoT device traffic is aggregated by the virtual CPE in front of OpenShift. Virtual CPE covers uh, many access functions, including a BNG. 
As for the SCN controller, they are now just using Ansible. It's not full automation with SCN controller because they want to check each network behavior at this stage so that they can design. Between two sites, they build the EVPN and manage network configuration by Ansible so far. I believe that they will start to work with SCN vendor once new architecture for Teleco H Pass model is finalized. So for further detail, we have a session in OpenSheet Commons Gathering. You can discuss with NTT Network Technology Laboratory at Austin. Please join the OpenSheet Commons Gathering. Thank you, Hi. That That's a great segue um, yeah. to do this. And, uh, also, uh, there will be many more POC opportunity to run IoT application in Telco Edge Pass infrastructure. In Equus IoT project, I found that there are many several POCs should be done in the edge computing infrastructure instead of a cloud infrastructure for real time service. I'm now starting to work with our IoT team and try to invite third party for starting cross-industry park on top of edge computing infrastructure that some of telecom carrier are working with us. The through the cross-industry park, telecom carrier will be able to get no real requirement from IoT industry. And the last thing I like to mention that uh, uh, about the uh, automotive industry's uh, activity. This is a new sign that the automotive industry is wanted tech edge computing infrastructure. Toyota presented the 5G requirement for B2X at Empress Japan last year. In the B2X, currently the vehicle onboard IoT gateway device sends the car's device data to the Toyota Big Data Center through the 4G mobile coordinate. It is estimated that data volume between vehicle and data center will reach 10 hexabytes per month around 2025. This will trigger the need for the new architecture of the network and the computing infrastructure to support the distributed resource and the topology aware edge computing storage capacity. They are exploring the design for geo-distributed deployment in 5G mobile infrastructure. Okay, uh, this is a red dot NAB Sophia stack. In summary, telecom carrier can provide network resource and uh, storage resource in addition to the edge computing to run OpenShift for edge pass. BNG as a virtual network function also can place in front of OpenShift for residential access. And uh, mobile edge platform as a virtual network function also can place in front of OpenShift for mobile access. Also service provider can provide a common service entity to many third party who develop the application entity in OpenShift container platform. So, key takes away from this session are two things. We better to keep flexible architecture so that we can implement edge pass in each telecom access infrastructure by ingress enhancement to interwork each edge platform. By using OpenSAC NAB and OpenSheet to continue platform, we can place mobile edge platform in front of OpenSheet for mobile edge network infrastructure. And for the residential access network, we can place BNG function in front of OpenShift on top of OpenSAC NAB platform. And through the collaboration activity with the telecom carriers r and I'm feeling that the sum of telecom carrier are transforming to new normal. They are going to be an ICT platform provider for new service provider who provide a new edge service to users, machine and cars and everything. 
We have a plan for the joint session with the NDD Network Technology Laboratory at the OpenShift Commons Gathering in Austin. We can discuss detail of the how Teco should provide a Teco Edge Pass on top of Edge Computing Infrastructure at the event. I think that's all in this session. Uh, thank you for listening. Awesome. Um, hi, thank you very much for this introduction because I think this is this is to set the stage really nicely for folks who are in the, in the telco and the automotive industries, but also for people who are going to be in the audience for um, the Bishop Commons gathering in Austin this coming December 5th. Um, and we're really looking forward to having the NTT um, do the um, presentation um, on their, their use case. Uh, I think that one of the, the things that um, that I like about the gatherings is that it opens up lots of conversations, and especially the stuff you're talking about around the automotive industry, because I know uh, a large number of the big automotive, BMW and Volvo and other folks, are um, already using OpenShift extensively. So it'll be interesting to see, um, to get their feedback um, on how this works and might work and play into what they're thinking. Um, around what's coming down in the next you know, 10, 5, or maybe even just two years um, uh, down the path with all the IoT and automotive and huge networks that we're going to have to be working with and, and supporting. So thank you very much for this talk. If people want to get a hold of you, Hyde, um, perhaps you could put your very first slide on. I think it had your um, contact information on it. Oh, yeah. In your contact. There we go. There we go. Live, live interactive demo. That's the demo part for here. So if you want to get a hold of Hyde um, at Red Hat and maybe connect with the folks at NTT if you've been listening to this um, and, and want to find out more before December 5th, um, yeah, please do. Actually, the NTT and have a uh, book, uh, demo tool uh, to manage uh, uh, mini robots. So Hyde, your your speaker has just at the very end decided to okay. put. Yeah, regarding the demo, uh, actually NTT NT library had a demo tool to control the mini robot. It's a nice demo, but uh, it takes time to prepare the demo. Uh, we can discuss with NTT NT library uh, prior for the uh, common gathering event. Oh, yeah. that would yeah. be cool. All right. Well, I'm going to say thank you and sign off now. Yeah. And thank um, you.